to the ceiling, it will drop onto the middle of the floor. That is to say, from the point of view of an observer on the shore, it does not fall vertically, since it shares the motion of the ship. So long as the ship's motion is steady, everything goes on inside the ship as if the ship were not moving. In orthodox physics, which is derived from Galileo, a uniform motion in a straight line has no discoverable effects. This was, in its day, as astonishing a form of relativity as that of Einstein is to us. Einstein, in the special theory of relativity, set to work to show how electromagnetic phenomena could be unaffected by uniform motion through the ether, if there be an ether. This was a more difficult problem, which could not be solved by merely adhering to the principles of Galileo. The really difficult effort required for solving this problem was in regard to time. It was necessary to introduce the notion of proper time as we have considered, and to abandon the old belief in one universal time. The quantitative laws of electromagnetic phenomena are expressed in Maxwell's equations, which are found to be true for all observers, however they may be moving. It is a straightforward mathematical problem to find out what differences there must be between the measures applied by one observer and the measures applied by another, if, in spite of their relative motion, they are to find the same equations verified. The answer is contained in the Lorentz transformation. This tells us what estimate of distances and periods of time will be made by an observer whose relative motion is known when we are given those of another observer. For example, say you are in a train. You have been travelling for a time measured by the clocks at the station from which you started. At a given distance from your starting point, as measured by the people on the line, an event occurs. Say the line is struck by lightning. You have been travelling all the time with a uniform velocity. The question is, how far from you will you judge that this event has taken place? And how long after you started will it be by your watch? Our solution of this problem has to satisfy certain conditions. It has to bring out the result that the velocity of light is the same for all observers, however they may be moving. And it has to make physical phenomena, in particular those of electromagnetism, obey the same laws for different observers, however they may find their measures of distances and times affected by their motion. And it has to make all such effects on measurement reciprocal. That is to say, if you are in a train and your motion affects your estimate of distances, outside the train, there must be an exactly similar change in the estimate which people outside the train make of distances inside it. These conditions are sufficient to determine the solution of the problem mathematically, though some of the consequences are strange, if considered from a terrestrial point of view. For example, you are in a train on a long straight railway and travelling at a significant fraction of the speed of light, say three-fifths. You measure the length of your train and find that it is a hundred metres. Suppose that the people who catch a glimpse of you as you pass succeed in taking observations which enable them to calculate the length of your train. If they do their work correctly, they will find that it is only eighty metres long. Everything in the train will seem to them shorter in the direction of the train than it does to you. Dinner plate which you see as ordinary, circular plates, will look to the outsider as if they were oval. They will seem only four-fifths as broad in the direction in which the train is moving as in the direction of the breadth of the train. And all this is reciprocal. Suppose you see out of the window a fishing rod, carried by someone who measures it to be five metres long. If it is held upright, you will also see it to be five metres long. So you will if it is held horizontally at right angles to the railway. But if it is pointed along the railway, it will seem to you to be only four metres long. In describing what is seen, I have assumed that everyone makes due allowances for perspective. All the lengths of objects in the train will be diminished by 20% in the direction of motion for people outside. And so will those of objects outside for you in the train. But the effects in regard to time are even more strange. 
This matter was explained with almost ideal lucidity by Eddington, and my example is based on one given by him. Imagine a spacecraft which moves away from the Earth at a speed of 250,000 kilometers a second. If you were able to observe the people in the spacecraft, you would infer that they were unusually slow in their movements, and other events in the vehicle would be similarly retarded. Everything which took place there would seem to take twice as long as usual. I say infer deliberately. You would see a still more extravagant slowing down of time, but that is easily explained because the spacecraft is rapidly increasing its distance from you, and the light impressions take longer and longer to reach you. The more moderate retardation referred to remains after you have allowed for the time of transmission of light. But here reciprocity comes in, because from the point of view of the space travellers, you are moving away from them at 250,000 kilometres a second. And when they have made all allowances, they find that it is you who are sluggish. This question of time is rather intricate, owing to the fact that events which one person judges to be simultaneous, another considers to be separated by a lapse of time. In order to try to make clear how time is affected, I shall revert to our railway train, travelling at a rate of three-fifths that of light. For the sake of illustration, I assume that the earth is large and flat, instead of small and round. If we take events which happen at a fixed point on the earth, and ask ourselves how long after the beginning of the journey they will seem to be to the traveller, the answer is that there will be that retardation that Eddington speaks of, which means in this case that what seems an hour in the life of the people on the ground is judged to be an hour and a quarter by the travellers who observe them from the train. And reciprocally, each makes periods of time observed in the life of others or quarter as long again as they are to those who live through them. The proportion is the same in regard to times as in regard to length. But when, instead of comparing events at the same place on the earth, we compare events at widely separated places, the results are still more odd. Let us now take all the events along the railway, which, from the point of view of people who are stationary on the earth, happen at a given instant, say the instant when the train passes a certain signal. Of these events, those which occur at points towards which the train is moving will seem to the travellers to have already happened, while those which occurred at points behind the train will, for them, be still in the future. When I say that events in the former direction will seem to have already happened, I'm saying something not strictly accurate, because they will not yet have seen them. But when they do see them, they will, after allowing for the velocity of light, come to the conclusion that these events must have happened before the moment in question. An event which happens in the forward direction along the railway, and which the stationary observers judge to be now, or rather will judge to have been now when they come to know of it, if it occurs at a distance along the line which light could travel in a second, will be judged by the travellers to have occurred three quarters of a second ago. They will antedate events in the forward direction along the railway by three quarters of the time that it would take light to travel from them to those on the earth whom they are just passing, and who hold that these events are happening now, or rather will hold that they happen now when the light from the events reaches them. Events happening on the railway behind the train will be post-dated by an exactly equal amount. We have thus a two-fold correction to